Hi, and welcome to the Tranquil Cottage Knits podcast. Today is Sunday, September 17th, 2017, and I'm your hostess, Michelle. You can find me on Ravelry as Tranquil Cottage, on Instagram as Tranquil Cottage Knits, and you can find the blog at www.tranquilcottagenits.weebly.com. So hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. I hope you had a wonderful week. Um, it has been just beautiful weather. Uh, it hasn't gotten too hot. It's been pretty nice, so uh, I'm happy. Today's a beautiful day to be alive. Um, I did want to start off with one housekeeping issue. I wanted to let you guys know, while I do mention at the beginning of every podcast, the um, my Instagram, my Ravelry, and uh, the blog, we do also have a Ravelry group. It is under Tranquil Cottage Knit, so please feel free to check it out on Ravelry and join. I am, as always, out here in the backyard at the Tranquil Cottage in the lovely Shenandoah Valley. I am accompanied by my pups, Tucker and Callie, and uh, excited Tucker got a new collar yesterday. It's leather. He's very stylish. Um, And my husband uh, got them these Mondo, Mondo bones. Um, They like they like bones anyway. I talked to our vet about it um, because Callie is a voracious chewer. Um, my dining room set can really attest to that. Um, she literally ruined it. She chewed every corner of every piece of furniture on our entire dining room set. Um, and she was a puppy and um, we, we've we mostly got her trained out of that occasionally. She will try to grab my yarn, which is a huge no-no. Um, but the way we've gotten her out of that is by quelling some of those natural urges by giving her things that she actually is allowed to chew. Uh, and we had consulted our vet as to what the best options for that were. Uh, they really preferred we not do rawhide. Um, I hear, I hear good things and bad things, um, but our vet says no, so we say no. Um, they do get, they're allowed to have the, um, I think, I want to say Good Friends makes them, but I'm not sure. Um, They are um, bones about this long, and they're filled with peanut butter, or you can get ones filled with beef, chicken, bacon and cheese flavor, or peanut butter and jelly flavor. Um, So they are allowed to have those, and they are allowed to have um, the large cooked bones. They are the ones my husband got that were like this. Tucker is 92 pounds. It is three times the size of his head, and he had no idea what to do with it. So we gave it to him last night, and he was just like, oh my goodness, what is this? So excited to get it. Handed it to him, he took it in his mouth and dropped it on the ground because it was so heavy and he didn't expect it. Um, It warms my heart because uh, when we first got him, um, we got him from the shelter, He obviously, by his, some of his behaviors, he had not the best life before he came to us and he, um, did not know what to do with toys. You could throw a ball and he just had no clue as to what to do with it. Uh, same thing for bones. He just didn't know what to do with a bone. Um, you can give it to him and he might sniff it and lick it, but then he'd lay there and look at it like, I, I, this is great, but I don't know what it is. Um, so now he will happily pick up a bone and lay down and chew on it for a while. Uh, last night he was chasing the ball for me and, um, he, he doesn't fetch. He plays, I think, keep away. Um, you throw the ball, he runs, gets it, picks up in his mouth and then tears around the yard in circles. So excited to have a ball. Um, and again, that just warms my heart because when we, when he first came to us, he had no idea really what playing was, um, or what a pleasurable chew on a bone was. And to me, those are things that are just intrinsic to being a happy dog. And so we're really happy that he's kind of come out of his shell and learned to be a bit more of a of a dog. And he runs in circles with Callie all the time. They dig in the yard. Not my favorite thing. But um, we're just really happy that he's come so far. And so these big Mondo bones that my husband got, I mean, like, they're like longer than my arm, like like twice as big around. Um, But they just, they're out here with their bones and they just have no idea what to do with them. So um, 
<laughs> Yesterday was a good day for the dogs. It was also a good day for my husband and I. Um, we grilled out again over our fire pit, and this time we did uh, some a couple pieces of chicken, and then we chopped up the chicken, and I had some leftover um, had some leftover cheese from a dinner that we had had a few nights ago, and some uh, half of a tomato, and uh, so I chopped them all up, and we had tacos uh, with flame broiled chicken that I marinated in uh, lime and cilantro and um, some spices, the, the fresco taco spices from Shenandoah Spice Company, and they were just kind of amazing. Grilled over mesquite, really awesome. Uh, so that's kind of been what's going on here at the Tranquil Cottage. Oh, um, my husband says I may have a button problem. Uh, I had um, gotten some buttons recently, and I wanted to show you guys because I think they are so cute. Check this out. Little heart-shaped buttons. And then this is the one I could just see like on a little newborn baby girl's sweater. So cute. And there's this one. And I may have gotten a couple of more. Um, one of my favorite things in the universe is um, I inherited my grandmother's button tin um, that my mom had. And so it's come to me now. That is like one of my most treasured possessions. Uh, so while I have all these vintage buttons, I also am adding my own buttons to it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this one. It says handmade and it's in the dark wood with stitching around it and I also have the light version of these and um, the buttons that I decided that are going to go on my um, my Rhinebeck sweater which is slinky ribs by Wendy Bernard these are the buttons that are going to go on that. Handmade with love. Let's see if you can focus. So those are going on there. I do have a little sheepy button. Ah, how cute is that? Um, and then I also got these other buttons and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use them for. Um, I know a lot of people use these for scrapbooking, and um, so I'll be passing some of them along to my aunt, who is a scrapbooker, and um, I'm sure that she will absolutely love them, but I fell in love with these seasonal tree buttons. Tell me this isn't just so awesome. It's an autumn tree button. So pretty. And then this is all the color leaves. This is my favorite. And then there is spring. Snow tree. I love these. They are so cute. Um, and I am actually putting buttons on my business cards. Uh, so if you are coming to Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival or if you will be at Rhinebeck, um, then find me because I will have um, free buttons for people that are put on my business cards just so people can find the blog easier, kind of put a face with the name. Um, so if you would like a button, come see me. Oh, Shenandoah Valley, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival is this coming weekend, um, September, I believe, 23rd, 24th uh, in Berryville, uh, Berryville, Virginia. 
And um, there is a podcaster meetup at 1 p.m. I will be there, and I hope you guys will too. Um, my husband is coming with me on Saturday. Uh, I would like to do a podcaster meetup. I'll post in, in the Shenandoah Valley. Shenandoah. I can't talk today. I will post in the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Group. Um, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival Group. Um about doing a podcaster meetup on both days. Um, my friend Becky, who is Wrapped in Wool, uh, she has the Wrapped in Wool podcast. She's Westerly Whimsley. Blah. I can't speak. Um, she is Westerly Whimsies on Westerly Whimsy on Ravelry and Wrapped in Wool for her podcast. And she's Wrapped in Wool on Instagram. <laughs> She will be coming to Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival with me on Sunday. We typically meet there, um, and a lot of times she brings her completely adorable son, Emmett, um, my little nephew, and mm, I can't wait to see him. And uh, we just have a good time. Uh, so if anybody else is going, let me know. Send me a message. Um, I can't wait to see everybody. I can't wait to see the festival. It is... It's smaller than like Maryland Sheep and Wool, obviously, you know, obviously smaller than Rhinebeck, um, but it is local to me and it is full of gorgeous, gorgeous local vendors. Um, I can't say enough good things about this fiber festival. It is not very crowded. Um, the people are just really, really nice and uh, it's just, it's good for not only networking, but seeing people that you haven't seen all year. It's good for connecting. Uh, and everybody is just so nice. It's really good just to spend time with like-minded individuals. So I really can't wait to go. Um, so I hope to see you guys there. My husband is coming with me on Saturday, and we are going to set up near uh, the near the trees at 10, around 1013, 10, 10, 13. Um, that's where the podcaster meetup is going to be at one o'clock. So uh, please feel free to join us. My husband is awesome and sets up a home base. So he says as long as it's not raining, because he just brings his electronics. Um, as long as it's not raining, because I want to bring my wheel and I want to spin for a while at the festival. And so uh, we'll be set up there and um, come by, say hi if you need a spot to put your stuff while you, know, you finish your shopping. Come on by, we're there. So really looking forward to it. And um, that's it for I guess Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Uh, last week I talked about things I wanted to knit. As always, I'm inspired during the week, and what I want to knit changes. Actually, I saw a meme that somebody had posted, and it really totally made me laugh. I have to go back and see who did it. Um, but it was, oh, I have to go back and look at it. But it was something like, um, most people in, most people, um, I, made, I met the greatest guy. Two days later, never mind. Knitters. I found the best pattern. Two days later, never mind. Something right along that line. So me. Um, so I got the new Craftsy catalog in the mail and fell in love with an item. Now, here's the thing. It's like if you live in Florida and you always wear sandals and flip-flops, you find a sock pattern you love you weigh against how likely you are to wear it, right? I'm kind of doing the same thing. I don't wear ponchos. However, Amy Beth from The Fat Squirrel Speaks is knitting a swancho. And I looked at her pod, her, I watched her, her podcast yesterday and was just blown away at how beautiful it was and the colors. And I just really, really, really kind of started to want one. And then I started thumbing through the Craftsy catalog and I find this. I love plaid. I love these colors. I want to knit this so badly, but I don't wear ponchos. But I want it, but I won't wear it. But I want it. And the kit is on sale for $18.03, which means 
you know, I couldn't go out and buy a sweater or a jacket for $18. So the price is extremely reasonable. I could just get the pattern and use yarn I already have, although I specifically like these colors. Oh, just beautiful. But I don't wear ponchos. But I want, to, I want the poncho. So I'm kind of torn, but I am hugely inspired by this, and I think it's absolutely lovely. And it is in the Crafty Handmade Holiday catalog that just arrived. And, um... Obviously, you can also get on the Craftsy website. I love Craftsy. Uh, I like, actually, I like a lot of their Cloudborn yarns. I never would have tried them had it not been for um, Amy Beth on the Fat Squirrel Squeaks. Fat Squirrel Squeaks. Fat Squirrel Speaks. Um, had it not been for her knitting with it and saying that she actually liked it, I probably never would have tried their Cloudborn line. Um, just because if I can't squish it, I'm not going to buy it. It's different when you know the manufacturer um, or you know the dyer, you know their yarn bases, you've squished them maybe in stores or at festivals. Like Ms. what I used for my uh, Find Your Fade, uh, Miss Babs' Yummy 2 ply, that was different. I had seen it so many times. I've squished it so many times. That's something where if I need a skein, I can just go ahead and get it online. Um, Malabrigo. The vast majority of their yarn lines I am already so familiar with that I have no problem um, just ordering it up. Um, now, Nitty and Color. That's another example, and I mentioned that one because I have a skein of it right here to talk about in a minute. Um, while I am not familiar with all of uh, the with all of the bases, um, Sarah's got several bases in Nitty and Color. I am familiar with her... Uh, her worsted, and I am familiar with her sock, um, her sock base, the glam sock. Um, so while I am familiar with those, I'm not familiar with some of her other yarn lines, but I, I do know her aesthetic isn't the right word. Um, I know her aesthetic and I love her aesthetic, but I also know her yarn sense, if that makes any sense. So I know that if I order something from her, it's going to be what I expect it to be. Um, I know her descriptions of her yarns are accurate, and I know um, that she knows the buzzwords to use. Uh, an example of that is when somebody describes a, a yarn or even a fiber as toothy. Uh, I know exactly what that means. I know that it's going to be a bit more grippy. It's going to be less smooth against the skin. Um, I know what to expect out of that yarn. Somebody says something silky. I know spinning it, it's going to be um, slippery. It's going to draft very easily, much more likely to, as a fiber, uh, to pull apart when trying to draft it. So drafting is going to be a little bit more inconsistent for me, probably. Um, I have a little bit of a problem with slick fibers. Um, so which merino doesn't give me a problem at all. But when you get into like yak and silk, I have such a hard time drafting it. Um, I've really got to practice on that. But so I would not have a problem ordering from, from Sarah, again, Nadine and Color, online because I already know what to expect out of her yarn and her yarn line and the types of, of items that she carries. The same thing, I wouldn't be worried about ordering things from El Abrigo. I also wouldn't be worried about ordering anything from Miss Babs. Just because I'm so familiar with the products they do carry, I know that I can read their description and get what I'm expecting. Uh, but when it comes to uh, other companies that I've never even squished the yarn that they have, uh, I, I'm much less likely, because I have to be budget conscious, I'm much less likely just to blindly order it and trust that it's going to be good. So that's one of the other reasons I love to listen to podcasts, because it gives me inspiration to try yarns that I may not have otherwise been exposed to, uh, and sometimes gives me the courage to try something that maybe I wouldn't have, I would have made a judgment call on and not, not done before. So um, one I do want to try is Gnome Acres. I hear... Uh, Nitty Barb 
and Tracy, uh, the two knitlet chicks, I hear them talk about gnome acres a lot. And that's a yarn line I have never gotten the, op the opportunity to try or squish. And so I really would like to try that. And I think that's maybe going to be on my list of uh, 2018 knitting goals. Do you do that? Do you make knitting goals? I do. Uh, my goals this year were to do it, knit myself a sweater, which I did. I knit, uh, the pattern, which escapes me. <gasps> rusted root. Uh, I knit rusted root and, uh, love how it came, it came out. I wear it pretty frequently. I also wanted to go to Rhinebeck again, which I'm doing. I also wanted to knit successfully knit a Rhinebeck sweater, which I am in the process of right now. Um, as a matter of fact, while I'm talking about her, this is my Slinky Ribs sweater by Wendy Bernard. You can see it is progressing. So I'm actually about to stop with all of the ribbing and then it'll be straight stockinette down to the end. So I've got probably about four, maybe five more inches to the bottom. And then it is sleeves and uh, I'm going to do a crocheted edging around the neckline. I did a small one just to kind of tighten it up a little bit and to see how it looked. But I think my crochet hook was a little too big. It's not quite as tight as I would like. So I'm going to um, take the crochet edging here out and I'm going to redo it so that I have a nice crocheted edging all the way around the neckline. So that is uh, Slinky Ribs by Wendy Bernard from the Custom Knits book. And I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. Uh, it is knit in Elspeth Lavold Silky Wool in the Rusty Red colorway. Uh, that is a yarn that I got on sale several years ago at uh, Fiberspace in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, and I am really excited. I am on my fourth ball, and I've got three more to wind. So that will be finishing this ball on the body, one more on the body, and uh, one for each sleeve, and then I have a about a quarter left to do the next trim. Uh, so that is progressing nicely. I'm more than halfway down the sweater, and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. So my goals were to get my knitting mojo back this year, knit a sweater, check, mojo, check, Rhinebeck sweater, Shh. I haven't finished the ek part, um, but I'm excited because that will be done. Um, what, what were my other goals? Knit my husband and I winter hats this year. Check and check. Um, and I think I'm, once I finish the sweater, I think I will be done with my knitting goals for the year. Uh, so at that point, then I just start the Christmas knitting can't wait. I'm doing well this year. Uh, last year, last year was, uh, my first full year without my mom. Um, she died in July, 2015. Uh, so last year, 2016 was just really, really hard. There was a lot going on. Um, it just emotionally, I also had major surgery in January 2016, so a lot physically, a lot mentally, um, just emotionally. I changed jobs. I moved. Um, 2016 was a really bad knitting year for me, and so that's why my goal in 2017 was to get my mojo back, uh, and I feel like I've really been successful in that, and um, I'm designing again. I'm, I'm starting to kind of get back to me. Um, when you lose somebody that you're so close to, it's hugely impactful. And sometimes recovering from that, not only is it a process in itself, um, sometimes it's just finding your way back to who you are um, and then learning how to incorporate that with the life that you now live. Because living without somebody that you, that's so important to you, so instrumental to who you are and so much of who you are as a person. Um, that's a big thing. And 
it changes so many aspects of your life and um, impacts who you're going to be going forward. So kind of reconciling all of that back into a workable life is a challenge and it takes a while and you do the best you can with what you've got at any given time. <laughs> and that's what it is. And I'm, I'm, I still miss her every day, but I'm really glad that I'm getting back into my craft. I'm glad that I'm growing and getting better. It's a lovely place to be. So last week, I also talked about my conundrum with uh, the knitting that I had on board. Sorry, I need to take a drink. Iced cold brew. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I had talked about the knitting conundrum that I had where I wanted to knit a second Rhinebeck sweater. And I thought that's what I was going to do. And then I remembered how chilly one of the days was when we were at Rhinebeck last year. And how I almost, almost broke down and bought a pair of um, machine knit mitts because I was cold. And how it was really hard for me not to do it because I was cold. And how ridiculous it is for me as a knitter to ever be cold. So I had talked about uh, making uh, the modicum mitts and then doing a cowl to match. So I thought about that and that's that was kind of my plan. I'd still love to do the modicum mitts. But in looking for, I was looking for something. So I was going through some of my stash stuff. And then I found a skein of knitting in color. And then I thought about the sparkly green that I was going to do for uh, the cowl or the hat to match the modicum mitts and thought, they actually look really glorious together. So this is Maple Creek Farm Annapolis, 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And it is in this really washed out horribly washed out. Uh, where can I get? Oh, there we go. That's it. This gorgeous green. And it's a tonal. It's got some bluer points and some more kind of yellow points. But the knitting color that I happened upon is this. Uh, and so... When I saw this, I was like, oh, that's gorgeous. I want to cast it on immediately. And then I thought, I can knit mitts with that, right? Well, I can knit socks. With, well, I can knit a hat. With, wait, wasn't I also going to knit mitts already and a hat? Mm. And then I realized the greens go so well together. You see those? Ah, yarn head. They go so well together. Mm, you smell like yarn. Mm, I love that smell. So, the they are both, um, it actually lo really looks like they're using the same base. Quite possible. Um, yeah, they're definitely using the same base. Um, Annapolis is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, hand wash, lay flat to dry, approximately 38, 438 yards. And this is Ain't It Fun, which is nitty in color. Let me show you the label because Sarah is all kinds of awesome. This is Ain't It Fun Glam Rock Sparkle Sock. 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, 438 yards for 100 grams. So, yeah, it looks like the same base, but the colors are glorious together. And so, I was like, hat, mitts, mitts, hat, two-color shawl. <laughs> oh my god, I want to knit all the things. <sighs> This workforce stuff, yo. Mm. So, <laughs> so, shifting gears, I think rather than a second Rhinebeck sweater, it's 
going to be something with these. Uh, two color shawl or possibly <laughs> a, oh I've got some of that pink too oh it's not sparkle hmm. two color shawl or possibly a hat if I can find a two color hat or maybe I'll design a two color hat and maybe I'll design two color mitts to go along with it I don't know what I'm going to do but I think these puppies go together they go together like peas and carrots So that is up in the knitting queue. And um, that crapsy shawl. I'm looking at the magazine and I'm just like, oh, why did you have to put a plaid poncho in there that I want so much, but will never wear? But I want. So. Um, Next up is something that I am hugely inspired by. And I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see it if it'll end up being washed out. Oh, before I get there, the other thing knitting that I want to do, um, Charlene, who is Knitter Ninja Char on Ravelry from the Yarn Yaks podcast, did the uh, Dodging Raindrops Cow. So pretty. I went and looked at the pattern and absolutely love it absolutely love it. It is so pretty. And now I want to knit one. I don't have time to knit all the things, but that is what I'm drooling over right now. The Dodging Raindrops Cowl, and that is by Vanessa Ewing on Ravelry. So um, you should totally check it out. It is lovely and beautiful and I'm sure, positive, I have some hand spun that would just be glorious for it. So I have to strive not to cast on all the things and then not finish anything. And then be cold and buy some mass-produced gloves and mitts at Ravelry. I'm at Ravelry at Rhinebeck. See it happening. Anyway, back to inspirations. So... I have a craft studio that is slowly coming into shape, very slowly. And one of the things I've actually been struggling with is what color do I want to paint it? What design do, you know, like how do I want the room to look? Because my goal is when you walk in the room to have it be inspiring and to have it be soul soothing. And that, to me, that's what a craft studio should be. And so I've been kind of wondering a lot about what to do aesthetically in the room and I received this week, I received last week, my new issue of Ply Magazine, which if you're not familiar, it is a, um, it is a magazine for hand spinners and um, the editor in chief is uh, JC Boggs Faulkner and she did uh, the craftsy class that I took on learning basic spinning. I love her teaching style. She is just so awesome and she just explains things in a way that really makes sense to me. In a way that she's just a really good teacher. And um, I I think it was a huge, uh, and not a huge investment, I think it was a hugely productive investment for me. Um, definitely worth it to take that class from her on, on, uh, Craftsy. Don't regret it a bit. Learned so much. Have gone back and watched it a couple extra times since then. So, uh, absolutely. If you want to get into spinning, I, I recommend it. Wheel spinning, not hand spinning. Uh, although Craftsy does have hand spinning classes. Um, so she is the editor in chief of, uh, Ply Magazine. And there are also names that you're probably going to know, um, such as Jillian Moreno, who are involved in it. Um, the first thing I ever remember seeing from, from Jillian Moreno was a nitty magazine, online nitty magazine pattern. I want to say it was Bad Penny that she designed. Um, and then she did Big Girl Knits, and I'm a huge fan of Big Girl Knits. Um, mostly because when that book came out, there was not a lot of people actually upsizing realistically 
for larger girl patterns or for larger patterns um, for women of size. And they were presented very well in the book that with ideas on how to um, ideas on how to really kind of hone in on what your Sorry, <laughs> that kind of scared me. It seemed very, very loud, like something was coming up behind me, and it was just a big blue jay. <laughs> that kind of scared me. Um, but how to upsize realistically for your figure and how to decide, uh, determine what your figure ratio was. I mean, it's easier to say, well, I'm larger up top or I'm larger on the bottom, uh, but how does that actually correlate to a pattern and, and how do you fix a pattern so that it actually looks good on your frame when you have an atypical frame. And um, like a lot of knitting patterns were for, while they may have, like a lot of clothing manufacturers, while they may have accounted for extra width of a person, they don't necessarily account for the extra length that a person needs when they're a larger size. Um, trying to think of a, here's here's the best way I can think of to explain it. Take the Craftsy magazine because it's thinner. If I take my if this is my figure, rather straight, nobody's that straight, but still, then you can see I'm using to go from the top of this light or this thing to the bottom. I'm using approximately this this distance. However, if I am knitting a garment for a person of size, or if I am a person of size knitting a garment for myself, and I'm doing that same distance, you can see how much more it took to go, rather than to go straight down it, it took a significant extra amount of length. Um, and so a lot of clothing manufacturers will take a cute little t-shirt and say, oh, well, we made this plus size. And it ends up being a bare midriff top. I think slowly they're getting better about it. Um, but another problem that I have, which is why I found the information in Big Girl Knits and um, also... Another that I, that was recommended by uh, Amy Beth from the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Um, drawing a blank though, um, I'll remember in a minute, I'm sure. But another um, another thing that I really love about those um, people who understand women with different sizes, different body shapes, things like that. One of the things that clothing designers don't understand, but knitting designers such as Jillian Moreno and is it Ann Hansen? No. Oh my goodness. I'll remember. I'll put it in the show notes. How about that? Hmm. How do you like them apples? Um, but one of the things that they, they understand, fashion industry, if I am a big girl, I do not necessarily have a big rack. Just because I'm endowed in the butt and the gut does not mean I've got boobage. Lack of boobal region. Not pleased about it. However, it's there or not there. And there's nothing I can really do to change it other than things that I don't really think are necessary to do because how I am is perfectly fine. <laughs> but... um. Clothing designers think that if if you're a larger girl, then you must have a ginormous rack. And so I find um, that things are cut in such a way that they hang down like almost like an empire empire waistband, just from the additional fabric that was given to allow for chest. It's just very weird, a lot of very weird cuts. Um, so that's one of the other things I absolutely love about knitting, and oh, it's so going to bother me. <laughs> so going to bother me about let's see if it's in the book. Um, about this class. Oh my goodness. 
So, um, uh, spires. So pretty, red and white. It's Christmas. Urgh! Um, so I really, really love that we're as knitters, maybe as people who are new knitters, people who are older knitters who just didn't know how to customize. There's really these wonderful one. Any mod is that? No. <laughs> that are coming up with these wonderful, wonderful learning resources to help really teach you how to um, how to make something yours, how to address, you know, I've got big hips and a small bust, but I've got fat arms up here, and then I've got these skinny little pencil wrists. I can knit a sweater that is going to fit me, my body, exactly the way I want it to. And that, that's just such a wonderful thing. And when I first started in knitting uh, back in 2006, we didn't have that. And so when they came out with Big Girl Knits, I just thought that was so awesome. Um, not only for people of size, but people who were not of size that maybe, what do you do if, you know, you're a thin girl and you've been a swimmer, so you have wider shoulders, and maybe you are blessed to have a large chest, but you have a tiny waist. Wow, what do you do? So all of these designers who put out this wonderful, wonderful Amy Herzog. I knew I'd get it. <laughs> I did it by thinking about the pattern I wanted to knit by her, um, the maple cotton candy. And they're that glorious red right hair in that photo. Oh. So what I appreciate about what Amy Herzog and Jilly Moreno have done in the knitting industry is just put out all this information on how to customize sweaters so they actually fit you. When the fashion industry has failed to do that for so many years, so like what, 100 years now, 150? When they, I don't know if you guys listen to many podcasts, but um, Stuff You Missed in History class. I listen to them all the time. And I absolutely love uh, Tracy V. Wilson and Holly Fry. They're wonderful. I think they are probably the best hosts that the show has ever had. But I love their style and their energy. But they talk a lot about uh, fashion design and how it changed. And when they talk about... Um, they were, I was listening to them talk... Hush... Hush. When I was listening to them talk about Marie Antoinette on a recent episode, they were talking about how when the change went over from all clothes being custom made to things being mass reproduced in factory, you know, factories just starting to produce clothes for, for mass consumption, how that really changed fashion, how the ease of which clothes could be made really changed fashion because nothing was being custom made anymore. And I do think that that as a society is a skill that we have both lost and an advantage that we have gained simultaneously. So, um, but knitting really kind of brings that back and the resurgence of sewing, uh, a lot of people sewing these days, but I think knitting and the the new sewing revolution that has come about has really brought that back to the forefront and allowed us as individuals to customize our clothing again uh, and to make things truly fit for us as opposed to us trying to conform to what exists out in the market for us. Uh, and I find that inspirational. Um, the other thing I've been finding inspirational as I completely went off on that tangent um, was trying to design my yarn room, my craft studio, and not knowing exactly what to do um, or what I wanted it to look like, what aesthetic. And then I came across this photo. And again, this is in Ply Magazine. Um, love this magazine. So glad I have a subscription. But this photo. This kind of muted painted pastel background with the wool and this is um poonies that were let's see uh, tucker 
Alpaca punies. The first puny was carded and wrapped around a one quarter inch dowel to form a soft roll lag. The second sample was picked, willowed, and rolled into a puny around a US number three knitting needle. So it's just two roll lags that were formed, but they're on this kind of muted painted background, and I love it. So I've decided I am going to take photos of yarn on different surfaces and then have them blown up and canvassed for my craft studio. I was so inspired by that and I think that is just a really beautiful way to honor my craft and at the same time create a space that I want to be in that's inspiring. So I'm really excited about that project and to start it. So let's see, we have covered dogs and coffee. Cold brew! We have covered um, my ever-changing knit queue, the things I'm inspired by, the progress on my Rhinebeck sweater, and my knitting goals for the year, and uh, some new things and some buttons, and I think that is all. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Uh, my goal right now is to maybe do some recording. Uh, I don't know how it'll come out, but I'm going to try to do some recording while I'm at Chan Tucker. Callie is eating her bone, and he forgot that his is 10 feet behind him. So I'm hopefully going to do some recording. Saturday at Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival so that you guys can maybe get a little bit of a taste or at least take some photos so you guys can see what it's about. Um, I was thinking one year if I find a bunch of people who want to come uh, but you know don't want to you know for cost reasons don't want to stay in hotels and things like that I was thinking about turning my yard into a campground and <laughs> whoever wants to come can just stay here and you know, we'll keep the door unlocked for anybody who needs to use the bathroom and just all festival together. Oh, I think that'll be a great thing as the podcast grows um, and I have you know, a net larger network of people. I think that'd be something fun to do. Uh, but I am off to play with, uh, knit my sweater and then play with this yarn a bit and see what I can uh, come up with as far as a two color shawl or a scarf or a hat or mitts or whatever, but I am so inspired by this beauty. And so I'm going to get on it and uh, I will talk to you next week and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.